Howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Smoke Report. I'm your host, Jay Todd, back from the Tobacco Plus Expo in sunny, warm Las Vegas, Nevada, where I met a lot of people and made some new friends. I also got a bundle of cigars and electronic cigarettes for free, which I will be reviewing on upcoming shows. But on this week's video, we have to get serious. We're going to be discussing an exploding e-cigarette that injured a man and what that could mean for an unregulated product. But let's start with the story on a drug called Chantix. Okay. <clears throat> this drug is designed to help people stop smoking. All right. Research, however, shows that it may also reduce alcohol consumption. Go figure. The makers of Chantix, Pfizer, have not commented on this study, but I personally know from my own experience that if I gave up both smoking and drinking at the same time, I would be depressed. Fortunately, Pfizer's got a pill for that too. It's called Zola. <laughs> I'm just saying. The thing is that uh, Chantix side effects include trouble sleeping, nausea, constipation, puking, and farting up a storm. Yeah, sounds real pleasant. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, if every smoker took Chantix and had gas issues, then they would have to make fart bands in bars and airplanes and federal buildings. You never know, stranger things have happened. We'll be back in a minute. Davidoff tobacco fields in the Dominican Republic. The robust leaves are ready for harvest. Over 100 skilled artisans will hand process each leaf, an aging and blending process that will take four years. Only the leaves which prevail will become a Davidoff, the world's finest cigar. The debate over electronic cigarettes is still all the rage. There are experts and doctors on both sides of the argument over safety. One thing is for sure, however, and that's that the U.S. government wants them regulated in some way. And what Uncle Sam wants, Uncle Sam usually gets. To be fair, it really isn't such a bad idea to have some sort of official standard oversight on production, safety, and what goes into those things. Take, for example, the story of a man in Florida whose e-cigarette exploded in his mouth. This is no joke. This is no funny story, my friends. The thing blew out some of his teeth, part of his tongue, and started a fire in his house. Authorities say there wasn't even enough of the device left over to identify the brand. But it concerns me especially because I don't want to promote any product on this show that could harm one of my viewers. From all the stories I've seen, this does appear to be some sort of disposable e-cig, and this is the first story I've ever heard of any serious type of malfunction, but it does clearly illustrate the need for some sort of minimal industry standards and corporate responsibility. It will be interesting to see over the next several weeks if the brand manufacturer is named, if any legal action is taken, and if the company steps up and takes responsibility if their e-cig is found to have been defective. Because you see, I'm not just here defending your rights as smokers, but as consumers as well. So. I will keep you informed on these stories and more on the next Smoke Report. Thanks for watching.